Hello friends, David Vogts here. Oh, friends, I have something very, very important that I want to tell you. Um, I'm shocked by what I have just learned. I'm still not completely sure if what I have just seen makes any sense or if it could be true or if it's some kind of an illusion set of circumstances that are coincidental I mean <sighs> there's a lot of people that have gotten famous by making claims and putting together some facts that appear to be interesting and to some people convincing, but it wasn't true. And I don't want to do that. And I've been very careful. I mean, on this here YouTube, we've gone through quite a few different hoaxes. And one of them is the flat earth. But the odd thing about some of these hoaxes and they, they, you remember the one where the, the mountains are trees? I don't know if any of you remember that one, but they, they showed the Devil's Tower in Wyoming. It's a mountain. And they said it looks like a tree, and so therefore all the mountains are trees. Well, there was another one called the Mandela Effect. And I've gone on record that I don't believe in the Mandela Effect even though there's some pretty interesting evidence for something. But I didn't think, you know, um, one of the evidences was that in the Bible, in Isaiah, everybody thinks it says, or they thought, they had remembered that the Bible actually says that the lamb will lie down with the lion. But it actually says the lamb will lie down with the wolf. And I think most people don't remember it that way. But, and, and, and I believe that's a fact. Now, why would that be? Well, I think there may be an, a logical explanation. We can't just say, oh, that's it. Boom. There's some sort of weird effect going on. Everything is changing around us. It's closing in a around us and and there's a some kind of a mandela effect that we're going to call it that you know because that it got started with um when mandela died people had said well they thought he died years before and everybody thought that including myself but i didn't really know if i could trust my memories about that because i didn't really you know, sometimes you just think, well, didn't that guy die before? You know, I don't know. I don't remember. You know, that's what we do. When we see something that doesn't really match with what we thought we remembered, we just think, well, maybe I just thought wrong. Then there was the Luke, I am your father. That's what we all remember. But that's evidently not what it, what it said in the movie. And there's a whole bunch more. Um, I think they call them the Bernstein Bears or something. I, I don't even remember. There's a bunch of different things that have happened that, that people remember that's not evidently the way it is. But going back to the flat earth for a minute, even though that's not true, because I don't believe that we live on an, a flat plane, you know, and fall off the the edge of the earth. Oh, no, Dave, you wouldn't fall off because there's a big wall of ice. Well, okay, who cares? I mean, the point is, if you could climb up on top of the wall of ice, you'd still fall off if, if it's flat, unless it goes on forever. Or maybe it just gradually slopes off into a, like a, like a frisbee, a little round edge, you know, you'd still fall off, right? Or, or like what's on the bottom? And I'm going to meet so many crazy questions. Uh, does the water because, you know, flat earthers are always trying to tell us that the earth has to be flat because water will always seek level. 
So if most of the earth is water, it couldn't be round because it's going to seek a level. Water is going to go flat and it's going to be level. You can use it for leveling your house. You know, water is level. But, of course, they don't explain, you know, they don't ex they show you or tell you about the fact that when you have water in a bucket and you spin it around and around, there's a thing called centrifugal force. And then the opposite of that is the gravity that pulls everything in from, from outside into the center. It's a magnetic pull. Now, if there's a, an outside pull or push to keep the water in, it's not going to be flat. In other words, if there's another force that would be strong enough on a long, on a large scale, like the size of the earth, if the earth had this gravity, it would be pulling everything in towards the center. And therefore, that's why the water would be staying the way it does. We know that air goes up. It's not a mystery. It just, air goes to the top, solid things go to the bottom, and the water would stay in the middle or, you know, closer to the top. After the water, would be the air and the clouds. And so it would stand to reason that if all of this pulling or this, if, if down is really the center because of the, the force, you, you know, you take empty space and you've got this powerful thing in space that has a, let's call it desire or gravity or pull. It's going to be pulling in from all angles around it. And it would form a ball. So that would explain, which is exactly what our science tells us, why water does what it does. But however, by their argument, if water always is on a plane, then wouldn't, if, if, the, if the earth was flat, then wouldn't the water fall off the edge? And I suppose they would say, yeah, it would, except that it's all frozen. <laughs> okay. But that wouldn't stop you from falling off. If you got up on that frozen wall and you jumped off, where would you go? Would you just jump off into space? It would just end? This doesn't make sense. However, what I'm trying to get at, and, and, and friends, stay tuned for a minute, because I've got something that has blown my mind. And I'm going to do some more investigation in this, the Mandela effect. I got some things, I got something I need to tell you. But just... Hang on one minute because I want to finish this thought. The fact that everybody's into this flat earth, even though it's not true, doesn't mean that it's none of it true. Now, there are some things that we, once we start looking into this situation, is we start finding out, wait a minute now. They're telling us that there is gravity and why gravity exists and they've got this E equals MC squared and we know that the stars are millions of light years away and stuff and we don't know that any of this is really true. We're taking it on faith. Not saying the earth is necessarily flat. I'm saying, well, I don't believe it's flat. Not like that. But what I am saying is we don't, it, it finally, it got us to thinking and, and maybe now we realize, wait a minute, maybe all of these things that they're telling us isn't actually true. We don't know what the truth is. Because we don't really have any pictures from outer space looking back at the Earth. Now, a lot of you not familiar with this might have argued, would probably say, well, of course we do, Dave. There's lots of pictures. There's even a picture of the Earth rising like a, an Earth rise when they're on the moon. Yeah, but if you do any investigation, I did a video some years ago where you can put that picture in um on your screen in Microsoft and get a, a special program that can look at the layers taking contrast and you know breaking it down and you'll see that that earth was photoshopped into the picture. Now this is an absolute fact. I know a lot of you're not gonna believe that, just like you didn't believe that. Obama's birth certificate was photoshopped. There were various layers that's not normal for a birth certificate. So it leads one to speculate and wonder, is there a hoax here? We find, we, we, we look at the, the moon landing and we don't see a, a real, it, it, it looks like a Hollywood script. 
There has been proof that it's literally was made up. They're shooting pictures somewhere in Arizona and saying it's Mars. This has been proven. Not, it's not actually in Arizona. It's some other place. I'm not sure where they're taking these pictures. I can't remember right now where it is, but look it up. You'll see that there's they've there's been people who have found these pictures, these snapshots that they're claiming is on Mars, and it's really somewhere on Earth. Someplace that's very deserty or something. But when people started investigating this and they asked NASA for the original pictures, they said they lost them. They don't have them anymore. Miraculously, coincidentally, they don't have them anymore. And um, so there's all these little things that say, okay, what are they hiding? What are they hiding? People have talked about the Van Allen belt. And um, something I found out just the other day, which I'm going to throw in here real quick, and then we'll get to the Mandela effect, friends. This is going to blow your mind. Please stay tuned. But I just, you guys probably know about that um, probe. I don't even remember the name of it, honestly, at this point. I don't have any notes with me. And so I'm, I, I never, you know, use notes or anything like that. Or, um, um, so this is all off the top of my head. But So I don't remember the name of the probe or uh, the satellite or whatever it is that they sent. Um. But it's been going out since, I think, the 70s or something. And it's been going along. It went past Mars and Jupiter and stuff. Well, not too long ago, it reached, it went beyond Uranus and Pluto, supposedly. And, of course, meanwhile, they were sending back pictures of Uranus and pictures of Pluto and things like that. You saw it in the news. But they just look like little marbles out in space. That really, you know, we don't have any idea what they're really showing us. But the funny thing is they never showed us any pictures of the Earth with that thing. They showed us all these other things that we, you know, we're familiar with what the Earth looks like. And if they showed us a fake picture of the Earth, we'd probably go, wait a minute. So they didn't show us that. But they got beyond Pluto. And they showed us that. But there's one little fact they left out. Now, if you look it up, they'll tell you this. You got to look it up. It's be real diligent in you know investigating this. But there is a a certain wall right beyond Pluto. I know it sounds crazy, but this is what they say. We wouldn't know, but this is what they're saying. There is a wall of fire. The temperatures there are like eighty thousand degrees or some hundred thousand. I don't know what. I can't remember the exact number, but it's it's in the Thousands and thousands and thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. And um, as all of you know, the hardest metal that we have, the most durable metals that we have, melt at just a couple of 3,000 degrees. That's all, you know, you don't even need to be, I don't know the exact number, but it's just a little over 1,000 degrees and anything on this earth melts. Completely, boom, it's gone, it melts. So if this machine that they put into orbit or, 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 you know, that's going into outer space is made out of something other than metal, I would think that would be pretty odd because it was started off in the 60s or 70s when they sent this thing out. And even if they had been doing it today, they wouldn't be able to make, we don't have any, as far as I know, we have no technology that can withstand temperatures of 80,000 degrees. And... So there is really, that's evidently probably why they're not really talking about that. But let me get back to this thing. This is what blew my mind. I don't believe in the Mandela effect because that would be pretty odd. And I'd have to have some proof of it. And just, for instance, the proof that they're giving isn't proof. It's just, it's just one of those things that make you say, hmm, you know, that's not proof. Like, well, I thought I thought he said, Luke, I am your father. But, you know, maybe I was wrong. Um, I, um, I thought it was the wolf lies down with the lion. But go look at your Bible. It doesn't say that. Well, I think the reason that some of these things are 
perplexing is because this is what I had thought. And this makes sense still, still to me. The, the beautiful picture of the lion and the lamb lying down together is in paintings all over the world. And poetically, people say that because it's beautiful. And that's what, somehow or another, that's what got started. People are saying the lamb and the lion lying down, not actually quoting the scripture verbatim, just, just saying it that way. It got very popular to say that. And probably because a lot of the paintings were a lamb and a lion in the painting. And so we just saw that and kind of assumed not too many people actually know their scriptures word for word, verbatim, every verse in the Bible. So people just saw it and they thought, well, lamb and the lion, that must be it. And then when they we're told, oh, no, no, it says the wolf. They're like, oh, my goodness, what's going on here? So I think the explanation there could be that we just are mistaken for that reason because we saw the paintings and the beautiful poetic quotes that were not actual verbatim scripture. And maybe with Luke, I am your father, it was something that, you know, kids were playing in their little phasers or whatever and, and, and dressing up like Darth Vader and you know, and, and they were reenacting this movie and it somehow somebody probably said somewhere on a commercial or something, Luke, I am your father, you know, and, and this stuck. And we didn't actually remember the actual line. And maybe that's why these things happen. But let me tell you something. The other day when Kanye West was on stage with Joel Osteen, I looked at that and one of the things that caught my attention, and I'm just telling you my feelings and what I'm, what I saw, and I'm going to get to some very interesting things here in a second. I just said, wait a minute, you know, I'm not too familiar with this guy, right? I don't sit around watching Joel Osteen. I, I probably, am a, I was aware of him. He's a pretty popular, famous preacher, but I don't, I never watched him, so I wasn't real familiar with him. But I saw Joel Osteen, and I thought, wait a minute, wasn't his name Joel Osteen? With an L, Olsting? Uh, well, I guess I'm wrong, you know. Because <laughs> obviously it's Joe Olsting. Go on the internet and everything's Osteen, Osteen. Even, you know, Joe Osteen took over for his father who died not really that long ago. John Osteen. And even his name supposedly is Osteen. So I thought, well, I guess I was wrong. That's kind of weird. So then I was talking to a really good friend who lives in Houston. A dear friend, and she, and I asked her, I said, you know, because she said she used to go to the guy's church. She went for a long time, used to donate money to his uh, um, church. And um, I asked her, I said, can you tell me something? Did he change his name? I mean, I remember Olstein, and she says, yes. He, he, it was Olsteen. It, it's always been Olsteen. I said, are you sure? She said, honey, I was actually a member of that church. I went to that church and I, I remember it was Olsteen. I said, are you sure? She says, yes, it, it, it was Olsteen. So I said, okay, well, that's again, maybe she's mistaken. <laughs> You're okay. I thought, well, maybe because of the Joel Osteen, people were saying Joel Osteen, and they got confused, and Joel Osteen, you know, who knows? So I'm still not convinced, you know, just because this person says, yes, I guarantee, so now I've got my own testimony that I felt like that's what it was, and then it was hers, and so I thought, okay, let me look this up for a minute. So, I punch in on Google, Joel Osteen, nothing comes up, it's all Osteen, so like, okay, I guess we're wrong, you know. Then I, <clears throat> I type in, did, was, was it Olstein or Osteen? And there's a, a web page that comes up. A couple of them, but mostly they're just repeats of the same website. And it says, oh, this is the sign of the end. It was actually Olstein. And when I know it was, because I used to go to the church and this is this and this and that, the other thing. And then they 
show a list of all the little places on Google where it actually says Olstein. O-L. There's a lot of them. If you really get to looking, and you think, well, maybe, again, people just misspelled it, even in the titles and stuff. <clears throat> but then, they, I found a book on Amazon. It's called The Apocalypse Unsealed. And it's got a picture of Joel Osteen or Olstein standing on the front looking like some kind of a, like a divine, you know, being or something. You know, he's standing there like this amazing, like he's going to reveal everything to us. He's this amazing prophet, right? He's, he's, his, his picture's right on the front cover. And it's all ominous and everything. And Amazon has right on the cover, Joel Olstein, O-L. Now, you would think if Amazon was selling a book or whoever published the book, because I'm not really sure who published it, you would think that they, if they had made a mistake in the spelling of his name, they would have changed it or made a correction. The very odd thing is, is that if you look down at the bottom, it says zero copies available. One person writes in the comments, can anyone find this book? I don't know that this book ever existed. I can't find any copies. If anyone has a copy of this, please let me know. Now that's kind of a red flag. So then there's a little link there that, that some other, like a, a used, a place that has any back copies, if there's any... Like if a book was ever published, and, and it, come on, it's Olstein. So it would have been thousands and thousands of these books somewhere in the world that used laying around, even if they are out of print now. Well, this place that you can purchase any used book that's ever been published, you know, they've got any out of print stuff. They have zero copies. They don't, they have the book. They, they show the picture of it and everything. But they say, no, we don't have any copies of it. So... This particular book, if it ever existed, and it, we assume it did because Amazon says it did, that would be a conspiracy in itself. If it existed, somebody purchased every last book and burned them or threw them away or did something. Now, that's very odd because if his name was Osteen and Amazon or whoever published this book made a mistake and put Olstein, all Joel would have had to do is ask them for a correction. Why would he feel it necessary to buy all the books up so there's no copies left in the world and hide it? It won't be long and it won't even be on the internet. They're taking all this stuff off because there's lots of old, like this particular website shows different places where it's Olstein. When if you go back there now, most of this gone. I can't find it on my own. So it's being sort of disappeared. You know, it's difficult to find any Anything to do with this old sting. And all that we have at this very moment, and this may change as we speak, I don't know. Take photocopies of this. Go on and find out. Uh, if anyone out there can do some research and find out if any of these books exist. But we need to verify this and keep some records of this because there's something that's weird here. Here's it, This doesn't stop here. Now, hang on. I wouldn't even probably have made this video if it had stopped there. I would have just said, well, some kind of crazy thing going on, you know. Well, just a coincidence, right? But then, I found a website or a, you know, a caption that says, Joel Olstein levitates off the stage 10 feet in the air. And it gives the whole story. His, you know, thousands of people were in attendance. They all saw it. And um, it says he, he 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 was given a sermon, and all of a sudden he he clutched his chest, and they all thought he was uh, having a heart attack or something. He falls to the stage on his knees and slumps down, and everybody was screaming, "What's going on? He's having a heart attack!" And he, boom, bounces. 
his chest out and throws his arms out like he's in a cross position. And it, 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 he's sweating profusely. And all of a sudden, boom, he levitates with this cross position, his arms outstretched. He levitates nine or ten feet in the air. The whole crowd is just screaming and panicking and nobody knows what's going on. People are crying. And then, boom, he falls to the stage. He's taken to a hospital. He's supposed to have a concussion. His wife in the audience faints. They take her to the hospital. All this is supposedly recorded. Thousands of people see it. And it's still evident on Google. You can go look it up and it'll, it, it, this one website appears to say that it happened. But you don't find any more information on this particular thing anywhere. Again, Maybe it never happened and the, and the website was a hoax, but it's not a web hoax website. It's, it's written several times by different people who witnessed it. Now, I'd like to know, any of you out there might know about this. I still haven't asked the person that used to go to that church. Maybe they would know, but I need to know if this actually happened. And if so, why did they remove? Well, you might assume that if it happened and 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 it didn't go well or people that day that saw it probably thought it was fake or something maybe he would he would he got a lot of money he's got 50 million dollars you know he might have think about this remember how we're talking about the einsteins and the epsteins and the weinsteins and the and the all these you know feinsteins and the silverbergs and the rosenbergs and the goes back to the Habsburgs, you know, <laughs> who were the royal blood and, and they became the Windsors. Okay, these individuals all have this, it's very odd, they all have this steam. Remember, uh, what is that guy? Ben Stein, right? He was also a member of this particular family related to these people. Well, think about it. They always change their name because they're not, you know, they were from Germany or something. So when they came over, they they picked a name because that wasn't their real name or something. And so we end up with these weird, weird names. They're either German or some, they change the letters around or it changes because they come to America. Well, so there's something going on here with the Osteen or the, you know, if you look it up, you can't find any record of him being uh, from Germany or anything like that. But there's something going on with the name and the spelling of the name. And then the ability to just literally remove all evidence that the name has ever changed. And then I also found uh, another thing where this particular guy was even on, I don't know if it was ABC or CBS or one of these news programs. And they said, there's been a hoax at Joel Osteen, they mentioned the Osteen, not the Osteen, but there's a big hoax, and this guy says that uh, he he appropriated the name Joel Osteen and got a Facebook page and said, "I've renounced my faith. I'm no longer a Christian." So they interviewed him, and the guy says, uh, "Yeah, I did it." And they said, "Well, why did you make this hoax?" He said, "Well, it was not a hoax. It's real." And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Okay, some crazy guy, right? So maybe they should arrest him, right? For impersonating somebody and doing it. No, it, nothing happened as far as I know. It's a very strange thing for them to make a big deal out of this and put it on the news. And the guy says it's not a hoax. And then it isn't hoax. And nobody, and nobody, it, too many of these things, hoaxes and weird things going on with this guy. And yet no explanations. I'm not saying this has anything to do with the Mandela effect. I'm saying that something's going on and I'm going to do some investigation about this guy. And um, I think if there is a change in anything, names or places or words or anything like that, 
It may be going on with the fact that we have a new thing in the last few years called Google that can, it's like the only media. There's very few other places and, and they're all owned by the same people. So they can retract spellings and make it look like it never existed. They could perhaps make it look like you never existed if they want to. Remember how we've been talking about once they, they put the satellites in the air, there was a little group of individuals in Germany after the war that they brought over here in Project Paperclip, and they created NASA and the satellites, and then that was just, that's become our government. It's, our, it's, a, it's a monitoring system. You go on to Facebook, you tell them where you're at, what you're doing every day. They got all your medical history, what you buy and sell, what you believe in, what you think, all your comments, where you live. At any moment of the day where you're at. I mean, they know everything. They're not trying to go. That's why I know they're not beyond Pluto out there right now. Not only because it's too hot, right? In that little wall of 80,000 degrees, they couldn't make it through that. They claim they already went through it. They're still getting signals. But because that's ridiculous. They're, it's a big hoax. Everything's a big hoax. The satellites are put in the air for one reason and one reason only. Not to find alien life or to, you know, see out beyond Pluto, but just simply to monitor us. The satellites are in the air. Yes, they are. It's real. Look at this phone. I mean, you're, you're, you're hearing me talk just almost live. You know, I, I make the video and boom, I load it and you're hearing me talk thousands of miles away. You may be in Australia, England, you know. Canada, wherever you may be in the Philippines or something listening to this. Radio signals can't go that far. This is satellite. They don't have fiber optics you know, all over the world like this. This is real. There is some kind of technology that they have. And what is it for? To monitor you. It's called GPS. They know exactly where you are. They know everything about you, everything, everything you do. They can change everything. Listen to me. I... As all of you know, I was a Jehovah's Witness. I was born a Jehovah's Witness. I was cast out of that organization as a great apostate when I was 18 years old. I've lost all my family, all my friends. Not all my family. I have my dear brothers um, that aren't Jehovah's Witnesses. Three brothers. My sisters passed away. But my family, my relatives, everybody's gone. As far as they're concerned, I don't exist. I went some years ago, maybe a couple, three years ago, I was able to go online and look at my father's Facebook. And I saw his picture. And sometimes he'd put a new picture up. And it was like very rare. I mean, they don't even go on hardly. But, you know, like an old picture I'd see a year old or something. So I could see my father. He didn't communicate with me. If I would have phoned him or anything, he'd hang up on me. So I had no communication with him for many years. But at least I was, ever so often, I'd go to his Facebook and I'd get to see my dear father and I'd see his face. And I'd think, well, I'm, I'm glad he's okay, you know, because he's like in his 80s. Or about 80, I guess. And, um, about a year ago, I go on there and he has no friends. I guess I'm blocked or something. It's as if I don't exist. And then I go on to some of my family members, you know, that I, you know, some relatives just to go to their Facebook. I used to be able to go on there and see their Facebooks and see if they're, do, you know, what they're doing. That's the only communication I had with family. And I went on and every one of my relatives... Every one of my, anyone I've ever known, their Facebooks have blocked me. Now, this could just be a, a modern thing that happened in like a couple years ago or some Facebook change or something. But I think it's odd that every one of them have done this. And so I don't know if they're just telling their congregations that apostates, you have to block them or something. I don't know what they're doing. But the point is, is that it can happen in a very small or at least for me, a large way. It's already happened. And my only friends now are you guys. But imagine 
what could happen if that kind of ridiculousness and evil starts being applied by the in, entire government. What happens, you know, it used to be, well, your church is crazy. Well, you're joining the Moonies, of course you get what you get, right? Or you're Mormon or you're this or you're that or some cult or whatever. Yeah, they disfellowship, excommunicate, you know, whatever. They shun you. That's their problem. You know, you shouldn't have joined. But now we're going to be excommunicated by the world. We're going to be blotted out as though we don't exist anymore. If we don't follow their rules, maybe once the wall, and I mean this technological wall that they're building around us, once it's up all the way, the dome, right? And we're all inside and there's no way out. And we're all part of the board and we're all plugged in. You don't play by their rules. They unplug you and you're gone. Maybe you will not be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Perhaps you won't be able to buy a loaf of bread or, or can of beans or any eggs or any potatoes or anything to eat. Perhaps you won't be able to get a loan to get a home or a car. Perhaps you won't be allowed to work anywhere. You'll be banned. You know, it's already beginning to happen. Friends, just a thought. Do you realize what's happening here? We're being boxed in. And most of us don't realize it. Just like the, the analogy I gave some time ago in one of my videos, we, I read somewhere where there's this little thing where this is how you catch a pig, right? You, you build one wall, one fence. And you put, on one side of the fence, you put a bunch of corn or, or some food for them. And they come, they look around and like, oh boy, this is good food, right? And they're eating, the, you know, nothing happens. Everything's great. They leave, you go back, you make another fence, like a little L. Next day, the pigs come along and they go, hey, let's go eat. Right? There's more food here. Oh, wait a minute. What's this other wall here? That's kind of weird. One of the pigs is a little worried. You know, the other pig's like, ah, don't worry about it, George. It's, you know, it's, it's fine. We're, we're not, you know, we're not under any day. Let's eat the, this great food here. Come on. Quit being all skeptical. It is silly. So they, they, they get their fill and they go off. And next day, the farmer builds one more fence. Kind of like a U, right? And one, just one opening. So figs come back next day and they go, wait, this is weird. <laughs> well, okay, we can still get in there, you know. Let's get the food well, while it lasts, you know. A couple of the pigs are like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't want to go in there. I'm a little skittish on this. This is kind of weird, man. Every time we come back, there's another part of the fence built. And ah, you're just being a conspiracy theorist. Come on, George. Let's go eat the you know, food. So they finally all get brave enough. They go in and they eat the food. They go get their fill, and they go, they go away, and the next day, farmer comes back and says, ah, he builds the last wall, but he leaves the gate open, now the pigs come back, and they go, what's going on here, now that we're, like, there's this one little gate to get in, that's all, you know, well, remember, Phil, he says, no problem, he's always, you know, gung-ho, and it's good food, right, he loves it, he says, don't worry about it, it's, you know, we can go through the hole here and get out. No problem. Come on. So they all go eat and get their fill. They're just chomping away. And all of a sudden, boom, they hear this click. Farmer comes in and closes the gate. And they're done. I think what's about to happen to all of us if we don't wake up, friends. Anyway, I'm going to do more on, on this. Um, do more investigation. And we'll get back to you guys. This is David Vos. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good one.